how exciting this is for the whole town. Um, several things are exciting. A, this is W.B. Du Bois, this is where he's from. Uh, very likely studied in this library. I'm going to say he studied in this library, unless our resident historian tells me I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. He studied in the Great American Library, which was not here. There we go. <laughs> Last time I asked for a clarification. Um, it's just it's great to see the, the banners downtown, uh, the, the, um, all the activities are going to be going on for the next month and then beyond that month through the rest of the year. Um, making this happen took an awful lot of work from a number of people, some of whom you'll hear from in a few minutes. But uh, Randy from the Du Bois Center, this sort of way, and Gwendolyn, where's Gwendolyn, from Multicultural Bridge, have been working and sort of pulled all this together with help from a lot of people. Um, who, who I, let, me, let me get some of them. I didn't write them all down. Um, oh, wait. Let me quickly acknowledge our library staff over there. Wave. Um, for being patient and helping, helping with this. Um, Ari and Railroad Street Youth. And there's a bunch of Railroad Street Youth. Karen from UMass. There's Karen. Carol. I knew that. Sorry. Um, we've had help from the schools. There's a few school people here. Ben Doran is hiding somewhere. Um, a, a couple of dignitaries I just want to mention, which is Dennis Powell from the, our local NAACP. Thank you. Um, Ray Gunn from the Clinton Church Restoration. And you're a dignitary. Cora Fortnite is here somewhere. She's hiding. So this is great. This is incredible. How just all of this coming together to make this happen, and I thank you all for coming. Really take time to look at this stuff. I'm going to say best in show is on the back side of that display case over there, there's a letter W.E.B. Du Bois wrote to President Kennedy early in his administration with suggestions on steps to take to help in this struggle. And if you read them, and it's amazing how many of them happened, how many of that came from him. and obviously more to be done, but how many of the things he laid out uh, eventually became policy. So really spend the time looking at this. Um, who's, who's next? Carol, formerly known as Karen, you want to come up? <laughs> so hi, everyone. Um, I, if I miss oh, anything, no, what? No, I think you were here, first of all, but I forgot. Um, um, what did Simon's Rock. I don't want to forget Simon's Rock, so thank you for, uh, they, they have done a lot. Yay. So now, please. Um, hi, my name is Whitney Battle Baptiste. I'm uh, coming from UMass Amherst. Um, and if I forget anything, Carol will correct me. Um, but I'm going to stand over here. Uh, so I'm the director of the Du Bois Center at UMass, which has been working a lot in partnership with everyone out here in Great Barrington because this is the place of his birth and just on the heels of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday um, it's very important that we understand Du Bois's role in part of kind of the architect and the foundation of the civil rights movement. Um, we have a lot of work to do. Um, we, I am so enthused because when I first came to UMass, Du Bois and Great Barrington, difficult relationship. And to come into the library and to see Du Bois, and, and this exhibit was pulled together by Carol Kinnear and folks in the library and the folks out here, and coming to figure out what pieces would best allow us to show and showcase Du Bois' time in Great Barrington, because he says that he was thoroughly Massachusetts. That means a lot. I'm not from Massachusetts, but apparently that's a thing. Um, but, um, uh, it, Great Barrington was always in his heart and in his soul. No matter what people talk about him later in life and the fact that he is laid to rest in Accra, Ghana and not here, please understand that Great Barrington, from the time he was born to the time he died, was always in his heart. And he always had faith that at some point, the things that the foundation of his kind of belief in this country and the democracy and us as a people started here in this place we call Great Barrington. Um, and I really appreciate the sun 
and, and, the, and the above 30 degree or 25 degree weather. So um, Du Bois would be happy about that too. Um, and I just want to say that these, really take a look at these pictures, um, these, um, this exhibit right here, because it talks a lot about his life and it talks a lot about his larger contributions. And I think that we need to understand Du Bois in the context of the everyday. We've had um, a couple of interesting comments by our current administration, and the irony is, is that Du Bois' father um, was born and raised in Haiti, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> and my last name is Baptiste because uh, it is from Haiti as well. So I just wanted to say please enjoy this exhibit. Look at all of the amazing pieces that Randy helped us come together and look because these are, I'm an archaeologist by training, so artifacts are the, like the, the essential aspect of all of our lives and the things that bring us together as a people. Um, and so please look at each one of these. And have I forgotten anything really? Okay, so thank you. I'm so excited. We are really close to Du Bois' birthday, but please let's celebrate Du Bois in more than just one day because 150 years it takes a long time to get there and we would love for it to be the year of Du Bois from February 23rd, 2018 to February 23rd, 2019. Let's see where we are in 2019. That should be exciting, right? Um, it's always never dull moment here in the United States of America. Um, so I just really, really am so grateful that Great Barrington has opened up its arms, its heart, and its, its intellectual capacity to welcome this native son back home in a way that is embracing and is real and is holistic. And please, if you have not read Du Bois, start by reading some of these letters. And if not, open up a book, go on Credo, which all of his papers can be accessed for free online, um, and look it up. Look at his words and understand that when it comes to things like, I don't know, free health care, um, a democracy, environmental justice, um, du Bois covers it all, and um, economic justice as well. He very much uh, uh, really pushed us to really think about what democracy means to us economically, as well as racially, as well as all of those things combined, because they are connected. And I hope that Du Bois reminds us that in some ways, even us way out from Amherst, we're all connected through Du Bois. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Randy Weinstein. Um, about 40 years ago, I started to collect rare objects. And one of the people I was fascinated with at that point had been the poet Richard Wilbur. And I had been in correspondence with him for trivial reasons. But he sent back some advice to me when I talked about the first thing that I decided to collect, which was like a fifth or sixth edition of uh, 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 Frederick Douglass's uh, uh, autobiography, his first one. And he sent me uh, in a letter uh, this line, and I, uh, and I wrote it down, I'll never forget it. He said that rare objects, collectibles, they're not sentimental trophies, but real aspects of the lives of works that matter. Now what does that mean translated? I'd like to give you an example. I'd like to just jump back to the year 1899 for a second. Important year for Du Bois, um, a triumphant year, a tragic year. Uh, du Bois lost his son, Burkhart, at the age of two, uh, in mid, or I'm so sorry, in early 1899. He came up here and he buried his son here at the Mahewi Cemetery. Afterwards, he stopped at the library the Great Barrington Free Library, and he handed them a copy of a book and he inscribed the copy of the book to them. And here it is right here, and I'd like to just read to you the inscription. Presented to the Great Barrington Free Library by Professor W.E.B. Du Bois, Atlanta, Georgia. That's what Richard Wilbur, I think, meant by saying that sentimental trophies can have some real life to them. Something that's always interested me was Du Bois's name. How do you pronounce his name? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Let's go back to the beginning. 
Because of UMass, we are in possession, for the time being, of W.E.B. Du Bois' original birth certificate. Not a copy that you see in David Loving Lewis's book, but the original birth certificate. Would you do me a favor, please, and tell me how they spell W.E.B. Du Bois' name? I don't know my glasses. His last name? His last name, yeah. <laughs> D-U-B-O-I-S-E. Mm -hmm. Was there a space in between them? No. Okay. Do you notice the spelling? He had to live with that and contend with that all of his life. You know what his solution was? This object right here, the voice in his own hand from the grave, tells you to pronounce his name, you as in you, oi as in boy, do boys. When I show this piece to people, ordinarily, or some may say, but he's spelling his name wrong. And that really throws me, because if you can't get your own name right, you know, what's the point? I'd like to segue just for a second, and in order to pull this uh, exhibit uh, off, I had uh, the assistance of um, my friend here, Coco um, Raymond from Simon's Rock, a student. And I wanted Coco just to talk for us a minute or two about any aspect of this that she liked it, since you're so involved in it. Please. Um, hi. Um, that's good. <laughs> I have spent um, a decent amount of this semester and this winter doing research on one of the most prolific civil rights activists in America, in American history, and I just would like to comment on how lucky we all are to have this amazing trove of artifacts and primary source documents materials. Thank you, UMass. Thank you, Credo. I got so much research from that <laughs> archive, and it's just, it's been a wonder working on this exhibit. Um, especially with the artifacts from Yolande, who I don't feel many of us know enough about. And she's a really remarkable person in her own right. And getting to work with um, the books who belonged to a woman, um, you know, I, I work with her school books. She was a student as- who, Who's Yolande? Yolande is Du Bois's daughter, sorry. <laughs> um, and I got to work with her school books. And as a college student studying in the town of Great Barrington in Du Bois's hometown, that was a really remarkable experience for me, and I really hope you all can um, take the time to appreciate just how wonderful these artifacts are and how important, especially in this moment, it is to remember real history. And who better to tell it than Du Bois himself? So thank you for allowing me to help with this. You know, I've often, uh, I, I wondered to myself, if I could grab just one or two pieces here, which ones would I save? And the answer is I couldn't, uh, save so they're like children, I just couldn't get that. Um, in talking about, you know, sentimental trophies and, and the real thing, this is something for you. There's a, there's a letter here written by the town clerk of Great Barrington in response to Du Bois' inquiry about the deaths of his mother and his uncle and his aunt. He filed this away. There are probably 30 or 40 different pieces of correspondence he had with the town of Great Barrington, no matter where he was, which I find really interesting. You know, a lot of people talk about what Du Bois has done, but what did we feel about Du Bois? And what did Du Bois feel about us? To answer, the latter is very, very easy in my mind to answer. And I'm going to talk to you about three important dates in his life. The first one I, I mentioned, 1899. He comes up here at the age of 31, and he buries his two-year-old boy at Mahewi Cemetery. Then 40, I'm sorry, 51 years later, he's back up here again to bury his first wife, Nina. And then 10 years, I'm sorry, 11 years after that, in 1961, Crucial year in Du Bois' life. He's 93 years old. He comes up here and he buries his daughter, Yolande. Pretty unbelievable. What else does Du Bois do in his, uh, in, eight, in, I'm so sorry, in 1961? He comes up here, buries his daughter. Um, he prepares to go to Ghana. He joins the American Communist Party. And he writes two or three articles, including one 